Hello friends, uh, Jeff here and welcome to Squadron Facebook Live. Now we all heard it all before, uh, you know, uh, being a modeler, like I got too many models, I got too many kits, uh, why do I need another model? I got so many models that I would never be able to build it even if I had two more lifetimes. You know, it's, it's part of uh, uh, our group, I guess, it's, uh, it, it's basically a disease we carry that uh, over the years we accumulate a vast amount of, uh, of, of unbuilt kits. Now, <clears throat> it can get expensive, uh, you know, but what isn't? Uh, everything costs money, and if you really are passionate about a, about a model or about any hobby, then uh, it's, not all, it's, it's basically not all, that, uh, not all that bad if you think about it. Now, <clears throat> for instance, uh, like I like, to, uh, I like to shoot my guns. You know, I, uh, I have a couple of guns and I like to go to the range, and shooting 50 to 100 bullets uh, doesn't take all that long. It takes about five, 10 minutes and it's gone. And then you have to pay for, and it usually doesn't stop uh, with that. And then you have to pay for the range and, and uh, just to, able, uh, to be able to shoot your gun. But, and then uh, you go home uh, and then you have to clean your gun and all that. But that's all part of the fun. It's all um, part of the, the hobby that you, that you choose. And then I, I just recently talked to somebody um, who, is, uh, who likes to collect books, you know, his, his passion is books. He's an avid reader, he, he has a whole library. But he told me, he said, he, I, I buy books uh, left and right. Uh, most of them I read or try to read. Other ones I just like because of the subject. And I just put them uh, in my library. And eventually uh, he has uh, thousands of books. Now, there's a difference between thousands of books or thousands of kids. And I personally, accumulated at least over 1500 and I, I think over the years I had a lot more uh, I'm just afraid to say it out loud but I personally know people or modelers who have like between three and five thousand kits uh, just stashed in their house now it's very uh, it is very 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 hard to explain to your spouse or your friends or your family why do I need another kit when I have like uh, like 750 in the spare bedroom so that's very hard to explain uh, but it's all good. At the end of the day, uh, it's all fine. Uh, just the other day, uh, my wife was looking. She's into crafting and she wants to do some subjects or projects for Christmas. And uh, there was some stuff in the attic. And so she uh, pulled the, the trap door down and uh, three or four kids fell on her head. So I heard her yell something. I'm afraid to ask what it was. But anyway, it, 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 had, it happens. Now, again, building a kit or not building a kit, it's not really... The, the, it's not really the issue if you build a kit or not build a kit because as long as you get the satisfaction out of it as long as you get the pleasure the enjoyment um, about uh, just looking at a kit or building it it's the same thing it's it's worth it now I'll give you an example let's say uh, the average kits today the average kit today cost about oh, about forty dollars fifty dollars if, you, if you're talking about a decent kit you can go from five dollars all the way to a thousand dollars but let's say on average a decent nice kit cost about forty to fifty dollars so in your mind you already budgeted it uh, you want to get that kit you, you either get inspired uh, a new kit came out or you went to a, a hobby show and you saw something built uh, that you liked you watched maybe a movie or a, a photo or, or read a book at the end of the day you want that kit now then uh, you purchase it. You either uh, go someplace and pick it up or you order it online. Now, in, an, in anticipation, during that period before you get the kit, you already start thinking about it. What am I gonna do with it? What color scheme am I gonna apply? Uh, which version am I gonna build? What decals am I, am I looking for? Do I need resin? Do I need um, a photo etch? Or simply, you're probably gonna watch some videos uh, online about the kit, how you can build it, how you can weather it. So you're already uh, basically into the project. You're already engaging what you're gonna do with that kit. And then of course the big day arrives, you come home from work, you drive up the, your driveway, and there it is in front of your door, there is the kit. So you can't wait to get out of the car, at least I can, uh, get out of the car uh, and uh, uh, get a cup of coffee, plant your button in the couch, and just look at the kit, go over it. So the first thing I always look at is the, the box art, you know, when you get the kit and say, oh my God, look at this, this, this box art. It, it already basically gives you a sense of uh, what, you're gonna, what you can do with the kit. And box art is very important. And I think a lot of their companies bank on that, you know, uh, a good box art is already 50% uh, part of the purchase that, that makes a consumer buy your kit. 
And just to, uh, just to name a few, like Tamiya and Edward, they, they got their, uh, can I say shit, shit together? Yeah, or get their shit together. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> uh, it's because, out there. Because, okay, I'm, I'm already <laughs> So they, they, uh, they already know uh, what to do and, and how to do it, and they do it well. So then you open the kit and then you take it out of the plastic uh, and you look at the at the parts. You know, it's it's like uh, it's like uh, sacred, you know, like uh, the detail, the recessed panel lines, the the, the rivets. Is there photo rivets in there? Is there uh, is there resin in there? Um, maybe you start to dry fit it. You put the fuse slots together. You put the half in so you can have at least a look how it's going to look. And uh, uh, and honestly. Uh, once in a while when my wife's not around or I'm alone in the room, I just smell it. I can smell the plastic. I don't know why. It brings, it brings back memories. I don't know why I do it. it it's, it's some kind of a, like a kit, like fondling kits, you know? Like, you can't, can't say that one. That's not PC. Oh, yeah. That, kit fondling? Yes. Did I just say that? Yes. Can we, we can't cut that. No, no. Nope. Right it's in there. Uh, I apologize. Uh, now I can go home. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. I, I, I actually it sounds creepy. I'm sorry. What, what do we call it then? Like, like four plastic four plate? <laughs> no, we. Oh, well. Anyway, you guys. I'm sorry. Uh, see, this is typical. This is typical me. Uh, sometimes the words come out of my mouth that are not filtered. So I apologize. Uh, I didn't say that. So, but most of you guys, you know, you know, it's you engage in the plastic, and uh, but that's a, that's a very pivotal point because that's really the side if you're gonna build that kit or you're gonna close the box and put it in yourself. So at that particular moment when you go through it, you either take it to your bench and, and start cutting it up and gluing it, or you, uh, uh, you put it in yourself with the other 15,000 you collected over the years. But it's not bad. If you think about, like I said in the beginning, it's all about enjoyment. If, if, if you are engaged with this kit for at least a week uh, or even longer, just by thinking about it, by, by whatever fantasizing about it, it's already worth the $50. So uh, that's a little bit of that philosophy. Now, I, I tell you right now, I uh, buy kits. Uh, sometimes I buy kits and I already know that I'm not gonna build them, uh, absolutely not. And those are the kits that, have, that I have a nostalgic uh, attachment to it. That kits that I bought because something happened, a special someone gave it to me, and uh, those are the kits I'm looking for and I collect and I just, uh, and I brought a few. Uh, you remember I told you last, uh, two weeks ago? It was two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago when we had the, uh, the, uh, the Airfix kit, my mother? Yes. Was, uh, okay, uh, two weeks ago, I told you that uh, my mom gave me this first kit and uh, it changed my life basically. And uh, so when she gave me that kit, two weeks later, I did my first communion and my aunt who was completely oblivious to everything, she bought me this. Now, I'm sure the older generation will uh, uh, recognize this. This is uh, the Focke Wolf from Ravel. And that, my friends, that's already a big step up uh, of, uh, of, uh, of this little kit here. The second one I got uh, was uh, that my sister bought me. This is the first kit that my sister bought me. She was like five years older than me. And when I did my confirmation, uh, she bought me this for, from the little money she had, so I, I had to have that again just to relive that moment, I guess. And uh, these two kits were given to me by uh, Jim Mesco. I'm sure you give, uh, you know Jim. Uh, Jim is a really renowned author. Uh, he made several Squadron Signal books. So Jim, uh, if you're watching this, I uh, appreciate it again because this is really nice. Now, last but not least, I brought is that uh, when I was. In my mid-teens, we had always these uh, uh, C-119 flying boxcars flying over. And uh, I always wanted to be uh, in the Airborne, which eventually I did. So before I went, uh, before I was drafted, actually, I went to boot camp. My parents gave me this as a going away present. So that's another one I have uh, uh, nostalgic attachments to. Now, every time I go to, uh, to, um, to a convention, I always try to pick up a few kits uh, that I never gonna build. Do I need them? No. But do I want them? Absolutely. And uh, those are usually, I'm looking for the, uh, the Airfix kits, the, the Red Stripe, which uh, was from the 60s. That's when I really started out with doing this. So that's a little bit, in a nutshell, what I think about it. Again, like in the beginning, don't be afraid. It's not about the purchase. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, it's not about building the kit. If you enjoy it just as much, 
in collecting it and looking at it and going back later and go and look at it again that's completely normal and that's fine um, so uh, let's move on to more Kevin says hi oh hey Kevin uh, uh, nice to join us um, Let's go on to the more important stuff, which is the drawing. So last week uh, we said that we're gonna play a little drawing and uh, we're gonna have uh, a t-shirt here, a modeler's t-shirt, what modelers say. So uh, we're gonna raffle that off. Of course, the right answer to the question, uh, which uh, airplane did Tamiya release this month in 148 scale? It was the P38 and several of you guys uh, had it right. So uh, we're gonna do a raffle, we're gonna do an, a name drawing. Everybody who was uh, live and, and uh, put their name in the, let's say, in the bucket, we're gonna draw that now so they can win the t-shirt. I'm gonna have my lovely cameraman, uh, Wendy. Over Whit Whitney. Oh, it's Whitney. Whitney, it's Whitney. Say hi, Whitney, to the people. Hi, All people. Right. Okay, so uh, if you do the honors. Right. Just, uh, right. Okay, there we go. Let's see who the lucky winner is. It's a uh, Leon uh, Krejci. I hope I say that right. It's Leon K R E J C L. So Leon, if you're uh, watching this, uh, please uh, either uh, contact our customer service or go to the website and uh, uh, send me a private email on the through the help desk with your address. Don't forget to mention your uh, your size, and we'll get that T-shirt out to you. So thanks again for watching. Now for next week. We're gonna do another raffle, of course, and the question is, now pay attention, the question is, which British plastic manufacturer, which British kit company, plastic manufacturer kit company, was founded in 1939 and still producing kits today? So which British plastic kit manufacturer uh, was founded in 1939 and still producing kits? Now we're gonna raffle this. Okay, so for next week's raffle, we're gonna raffle the new, Oh, I have to Through go across, this way. Yeah. So for next week, we're going to raffle uh, the Hummel. It's new, uh, Tamiya's newest armor. So uh, put, your, uh, put your name in. Leave it in the comments, please. And uh, on again. Facebook. What is it? <clears throat> on Facebook. On Facebook, yes. Uh, on Facebook. And, uh, but for now, eh, okay, we'll have another drawing next week. So that was about it. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, don't forget to uh, share this. Please, 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 please share it with everybody. Share it with with your friends, your family, your co-workers, share it all over the world. Uh, I need your help because I'd like to talk to people. Uh, no matter what I say, I just like to talk. So uh, to keep doing this, I need a lot of help. So please, please, please spread the word. Uh, also uh, do it on Facebook, do it on Instagram. Uh, sign up on, uh, subscribe to, uh, to YouTube for the people that didn't watch it today. They still, or uh, maybe watch it later on today, they can watch it on YouTube. But please, 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 it's very important for us, subscribe. And then uh, also, uh, don't forget to go to our website, that's squadron.com, to uh, see what's, uh, what's new and what's, what's coming. And then last but not least, of course, we have our little pop-up shop, uh, the Christmas shop that is attached to our building. So if you're living in an area, if you're living in the neighborhood, uh, please stop by every Saturday from 9 to 3 o'clock and uh, come and say hi, have coffee, uh, have coffee and eat some, uh, some cookies. And uh, uh, we, can, uh, we can all have a, like, 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 uh, like a great party. Now... Uh, what was my train of thoughts? I have nothing more to say, I guess. I don't uh, think so. No? I, no? Okay, well, that's it then. I think I wasted enough of your time. I hope you liked it. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And uh, I'll see you guys around. Jeffy here, signing off.